Boom! What's going on, everybody? I am Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and this is Toy Talk. In last week's video, I talked about resin and early plastics, and how they revolutionized making products for the homes and for toys. I also talked about a few manufacturers like Advantage Diecast and Speccast who have made resin toys over the years. And if you missed that video, please go click the link up above and get all caught up on that video. Also, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel to get notified of all of my videos. Today I'm going to talk more about resin models and other manufacturers that have made resin models in the last 15 to 20 years or so. So, without further ado, let's get on with it, and we'll start off with Speccast. Speccast was the most prolific farm toy maker in resin. Speccast made many tractors in 1 16th scale in resin that had not enough market mass appeal to be made in true die cast. They also made a few 1 64th scale pulling tractors and those are highly sought after, along with a few other items in resin. But I'm talking mainly the 1 16th scale farm tractors and implements. They used resin because of not enough market appeal, but they wanted to remain competitive price-wise with the far more mass-produced die-cast models, making their resin collectibles far more collectible than the die-cast of the other manufacturers or other die-casts that even Speccast made because they're so much more limited. We start off over here with the BF Avery Model A tractor. This is a pretty rare tractor in the real world, very small market. We followed it up with a Silver King Model 42 tractor. Now Speccast made other Silver King tractors, but the Model 42 is the one I have. They made an Alice Chalmers fuel cell tractor. That was for the Orange Spectacular show in Hutchinson, Minnesota. They also did for the same show, the Alice Chalmers 160 tractor in resin. Now, getting to some experimental tractors, Speccast made them in resin because there was a small market. And we start off with the International HT340 turbine tractor, and then the International HT341 turbine tractor. International worked back in the early days of turbines trying to see if they would be feasible for farm tractors. They proved ineffective because the engines were so light, the tractors were so light, they were just couldn't pull. They had horsepower, but they didn't have any pulling power. Another experimental that they made was this Minneapolis Moline IT. Getting models of experimentals is actually kind of rare because most experimentals are just destroyed as soon as they're made rather than being even pictures getting out. So getting an experimental in your collection is a pretty cool thing. They also followed it up with this 1951 Wards tractor in a row crop narrow front version. They also did the 51 Wards as a wide front for the FFA. These are pretty cool tractors. Back in the day, you could go to Montgomery Wards and buy a tractor. And this is what you'd get. They're made in Indiana. Now today, that same concept of going to a department hardware type store and buying a tractor still exists. Rural King used to sell Massey Ferguson, and now they have their own brand of RK tractors. Pretty cool, huh? Now Speccast also made a few implements for us, like this International 80 pull type combine, and they also made this new idea, model 311 two row pull type corn husker Horn picker. Pretty cool implements. Now, Ertl, they also dabbled with resin a little bit. It's not very well known and it's not very common, but they did back when John Deere acquired Cameco Manufacturing, they made a resin version of the Cameco sugarcane harvester to commemorate the merger. It was done so John Deere could show off what they had just purchased. And then Ertl made this resin version to commemorate it. Later, John Deere would paint them green and put their badges on them. And Ertl made the John Deere wheeled and tracked versions out of die cast and plastic in 132 scale. 
Now back to cars and trucks. Advantage Diecast has taken a twist on resin models. They did this by utilizing diecast frames underneath their resin caps. These resin hybrids, they give the best of both worlds because they allow for low production numbers and they also allow for strong structural models that will enhance our collections on our shelves or on our dioramas. We have over here the first releases by Advantage Diecast. Up first is the 1975 Chevrolet C65 medium duty flatbed. Now this model comes in red, white, blue, and yellow versions. They were extremely limited at only 200 pieces a piece. Next, they had the 1973 Chevrolet Titan 90 cab over truck. Now this was a very, very popular truck in the 1970s. Followed by the 1977 Chevrolet Bison with a sleeping compartment. The Chevrolet Bison is one of the rarest trucks you'll ever find because the Chevrolet Bison was only offered for a very short time and most dealers did not carry them. Also, they released a day cab version of a 1980 Chevrolet Bison. Resin was adopted in Europe far faster than it has been in the United States. That's because in Europe, the, the collectors look at anything with opening doors and opening hoods as toys for kids to play with. So resin, be, mainly making sealed bodies, was adopted very quickly because they could make the small runs and get lots and lots of models inexpensively. So the Europeans adopted it and Americans are starting to adopt it. It's the best of both worlds for us. Neo Scale Models from the Netherlands was one of the first model car manufacturers in resin in Europe, and is possibly the world's largest resin model maker. Here we have a 1991 Jeep Grand Wagoneer that they made, and a 1971 Chevrolet C10 that they made. Now, Neo didn't just focus on cars. They also made some 43rd scale trucks, and then they got much more popular with the 164 scale trucks. They made this 1983 Ford CLT 9000. They made a 1977 White Road Boss tow truck. They made this 1960 Chevy Steel Tilt Cab box truck to show that they didn't just make road tractors. They also made an International Fleet Star with two bottom dump trailers. These were made to show off how trailers and dumps were done out west. And they're not too common back here, but they show that they also made trailers and trailers were possible in resin material. Now, top shelf replicas. They were one of the first manufacturers to make model trucks in 164 scale. They were very fragile and extremely detailed. So they were just pretty much good for only being put on the collector's shelves. They weren't great for dioramas. They were a shelf model. And they start out with this Brockway 761. Then they did a Mac H67, cab over. Neo did a Mac H61 as a comparable piece to this. And then their very first release was this International RDF C 405 cab over. And then they followed that up with the International RDF 405 West Coast Long Nose Conventional Truck. Another manufacturer that went into resin was American Heritage Models. And they produced a 143rd scale ACF Brill IC41 a coach. This is a bus that was famously used with Greyhound, particularly Southeastern Greyhound lines. They released a couple of versions for Greyhound, and then they also released Continental Trailways, National Trailways, American Bus Lines, and Blue Ridge Lines. Mini Champs, they took resin to an all new level by making many 118th scale dream cars. These were the cars of the Motorama days, and they were the other true luxury cars from the past. They started out with this 1951 Buick LeSabre concept. 
Then they got this 1953 Buick Wildcat 1 concept. Those were beautiful Motorama era days. And then for the luxury cars, they made this 1929 Duesenberg Model J Torpedo Convertible Coupe Boat Tail. Isn't that beautiful? Another small manufacturer that came out was Dark Horse Models. He released two colors on a single casting of a 1950 Oldsmobile Rocket 88 two-door coupe. Now, he only made about 350 of each of these, making these very sought-after models and hard-to-find collectibles. He did a crest blue version and a canto cream version. Aren't those gorgeous? You need those sitting on your shelves, don't you? Now, Matrix Scale Models. They came on the scene right after Neo Scale Models was sold off to Model Car World of Germany. They carved out a niche by making mainly 143rd scale resin models, like this 1941 Chrysler Newport Dual Cal Phaeton LeBaron. They also made this 1946 Delahaye 145 V12 Frenet Cabriolet. But they've also started dabbling in 118th scale resin, like this 1977 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40, possibly one of the most famous off-road vehicles ever built, is the Land Cruiser, by being the only four-wheel drive vehicle to make it to the base camp at Mount Fuji. Automodelio, they changed the entire dynamic for resin when they came on the scene by making runs of 300 or less pieces. Now, they charge a little bit more for one of their runs than the average resin model that is done in 1,200 pieces. But that's okay. Theirs are much more exclusive and a lot harder to hunt down and find to put in your collections. Like the 1948 Norman, E. Tibbs Streamliner and the 1963 Studebaker Avanti Supercharged Two-Door Coupe. Those were beautiful real cars. Now, Auto World. Yes, Auto World, that same company that makes all those beautiful, true-to-scale, 164-scale releases. They also, in their early days, dabbled in resin models. And they made some 43rd scale releases like the Buick GNX. Wasn't that a just classic 80s muscle car? Then they did the 1988 Buick Regal. They did a 1977 Dodge Monaco for the Chicago Police. Now this was out of the movie The Blues Brothers. And they also possibly did the most famous Plymouth Fury of all time. The 1958 Fury that was used in the movie Christine. Another manufacturer who changed everything for resin was Best of Show. They came on the scene making higher production run models with a little bit lower cost. The 43rds average about $55 a piece where the average in all the other resin models is $75 to $85 a piece. Closer to $85 these days but their $55 is because they are making larger runs. They are also making a few 118th scale resin models, like this 1985 Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser. Can you imagine somebody making that in die cast? The model just isn't popular enough in the real world in order to justify a die cast tooling and sell that many of them. Now this next group of models, I'm not going to tell you who made them up front. I want you to guess. It's a 1970 Ford Mustang, a 1969 Chevrolet Camaro, and a 1969 Plymouth GTX. I am willing to bet you that you will never, ever guess who made these. Because it was Diecast Promotions Highway 61. Back at the end of the Highway 61 line, they used these as a possible dabbling into and seeing if 143rd scale resin replicas would be a good fit for them. Ultimately, it was not, and they sold off the Highway 61 line to Greenlight and Diecast Promotions, then later sold the entire company out 
and everything else to First Gear Inc. Green Light Collectibles. Yes, I said Green Light Collectibles. That company that is famous for all of those 164 scale cars that are populating our dioramas everywhere. They're huge die cast makers. They are also working on resin collectibles in their bespoke collections. And they're starting out with the 1967 Shelby GT500 from the movie Gone in 60 Seconds. That beautiful silver car that was nicknamed Eleanor. Another release that they're making in the bespoke collection as resin is the GMC van from the A-Team TV show. Who doesn't remember that van? Classic from the 80s. Now, let me know in the comments below if you have any of these models in your collections or about any other resin models that you might have. I'd like to hear about it. And from what you've seen today, you can see that resin is here and it is here to stay. It has a growing group of followers in the collectors and the producers have taken notice and they're starting to fill the need. So we need to start adding resin models to our collections today. And more about this topic, I've got a free report on resin versus diecast. Grab a copy of it down in the link in the description below. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified of all of my videos. And if you know anybody who'd enjoy this topic, or any of my other videos for that matter, please go on and share it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next week. I am Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk.